Well, hello again, folks, and welcome to my Shell Buzzy Coffee Break. Information, education, and referral when it comes to the coffee break. With me today, I've got Sean, and he comes from Bakerview Heating and uh, Air Conditioning. All those niceties that keep you comfortable, be it summer or winter. We're going to talk today about, uh, well, maintaining a natural gas or propane yep. insert. That's a fireplace log insert. Now I know a lot of homeowners have converted from wood burning to natural gas. We're going to talk about maintaining, not sweeping out the ashes down into the ash dump, eh Sean? We're no. going to be talking about the things that make it really convenient Correct. and uh, efficient. So tell me, when you go into a home, because you are our referral, you're, you're going out and you're doing um, furnaces on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm sure you take a look at hot water tanks as well. Correct. But you know, a lot of people out there don't realize, homeowners don't realize they should be servicing their natural gas or propane. The reason why propane, because propane is out there in the rural areas, maintaining or the maintenance required on those. Yeah, well, one of the, the main things that people will call in about is that their glass is fogging up. On their on their fireplace, so um, that means that something's definitely wrong. Um, either it's it's not burning properly, or um, you know something's plugged in it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we'll we'll come out, we'll inspect that, we'll inspect the glass, we'll inspect the um, the uh, glass uh, seal that's around the the, the door. Mm -hmm. um, we'll check for carbon monoxide to make sure. I mean, after we've serviced it, we want to make sure that um, you know there's no leaks in it because uh, you it's all sealed up with uh, different types of silicones and stuff. So we want to sure that we have no carbon dioxide coming into that house. One of the things um, that I've found talking to people over the years that, uh, and you used the term fogging up or the glass fogging up, and uh, I know we've had a real change in weather patterns. We've had, uh, not uh, for ages, I can, you know, I tried to think back, when was the last time we really had a great wet moist fog? And when you get those uh, low pressure days and you get that moist air uh, mm -hmm. forming the fog crystals and those fog crystals will find themselves coming down into a chimney pipe or vent into a firebox yeah. and you do get that fogging up but uh, it all is relevant to as to what type of venting and all the rest of it that obviously gets dusty what sort of things do you find in a fireplace insert uh, well we'll find sometimes that the the venting is not done right sometimes you know um, uh, we'll find uh, that the logs aren't aren't in the correct spot. They have to be in the correct spot, um, mm. not necessarily on a sand pan. You know, you can kind of set them up kind of where you. Well, lob just them. so you know, sand pan, folks. That's the one you have the sand in the bottom, and the gas flame comes up through the sand, and then your logs get heated. Then the heat is radiant out into your room. Not very efficient. No, not not efficient. Most of your heat goes straight up the chimney on those ones. But the inserts, uh, you you really want to make sure. I mean, you could have your kids playing in the basement. You know, hits a, a ball hits the glass, and it just moves that log out of the way, and that's when you're going to get the sooting up or even the fogging up of your glass. Right. Um, right. So, and you want to make sure that, um, uh, like I said, everything's clean. If you don't have that right air to gas mixture going through your venturi or your your air shutter, mm -hmm. you're you're going to have fogging up. Um, now here's one. Here's one, and that is that uh, when you have a natural gas or propane. Uh, sand pan unit. There's no metal chimney above those. They use the same chimney flue that would have been used with the wood burner That's right. from the beginning. Yep. They fix the the uh, the actual vent door, which damper, is your draft yep. damper door, open, yep. and uh, from that point, uh, everything. Uh, well, as you say, it goes right up the chimney. All yep. the heat that's produced right. goes up the chimney. But moisture. You get into a basement. And there's a very moist uh, environment there. Condensation will form up in the flue. Yeah. And we've actually had people phone and talk to me saying, I got water coming down inside my fireplace. And I'll say, ah, sand pan unit. You got, oh yeah, What's, is there a problem? Well, the problem is that it's, uh, it's hot condensing and cold. before it ever gets to That's the top. Right. Yeah, it's hot and cold. It just doesn't mix. You're going to have condensation. Simple as that. So do you service those sand pan units as uh, well? Yeah, we'll, we'll service them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Most of the time we'll recommend a 
an insert, something that's going to be more efficient. Because people do ask, they say, well, you know, it's, it's really not that efficient. It's, it's, it almost feels colder down here when I turn this thing on. Yeah. We have to sit right in front of it to get warm. And I said, well, you know, you're, you're basically getting that draft going straight up that chimney. And it's always open. And that you cubic foot of air that's going up the chimney has to come from somewhere. That's right. So if it's from around a window, around a door, Correct. somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So it's just going to go straight up there. You turn your furnace on, well, that's where your heat's going. Yeah. Now, furnace maintenance, when you're servicing a furnace, and you find that talking to the homeowner that there is a fireplace insert in the basement or upstairs, uh, do you normally uh, ask the homeowner, would you like that serviced at the same time? And if so, I, I don't want to get into pricing or anything like that, but where does it compare to, say, servicing a furnace? Is it half as much, quarter as much? Um, I believe, well, I mean, our service rates are our service rates. Um, we, we have, um, like your second appliance, uh, rate. Oh, well, there so, you go. So, yeah. So if it's, um, it's about, it's about three quarters, uh, what a furnace would be. Right. So okay. e each appliance and, and then, and then when we get into, you know, so many appliances, we'll, we'll reduce the rate as we right, go. Right. Right. Uh, Cause we're there already. Right. So, but the most important thing is service them. Yes. And, and we'll ask. And, and, and a lot of times they'll ask. They'll yes. say, Hey, I got a gas fireplace. Should that be serviced too? Well, absolutely. It should yeah. be. Yeah. Now, what about flame? I always hear, get rid of the orange, have the blue. Well, you want you want a little bit of yellow tipping mm -hmm. um, when it first c comes on. And then once those logs warm up, you'll get more of a yellow flame. Mm -hmm. But you do want, yeah, you don't want too yellow of a flame. It's just like having a, a lighting a match underneath a white cup. You're going right. to get that, that soot, and you don't want that. Right. You certainly want, well, blue's hotter anyway. Right. Blue is a hotter flame, for sure. Okay, standing yeah. pilot lights, electronic pilot lights. Well, you've you've got your older fireplaces that all have standing pilots. Um, they'll either have a thermocouple and a, um, a pilot generator or a mercury switch that shuts things off very quickly. Mm -hmm. If if it gets snuffed out, you want that right. gas shutting off. Right. Um, your thermopile or pilot generator will actually turn that gas valve on and off. And some just have a thermopile, just something that does everything. Mm -hmm. um, but today, uh, the new restrictions are um, electronic ignition. Mm -hmm. So. People ask, well, what if my power goes out? Well, they do have battery packs underneath. Mm -hmm. You just put a couple of D batteries or a couple of 9-volt batteries in there, and it'll actually work when the power is off. Right. Yeah, because people you, obviously want to have heat. Yeah, you could light them with a barbecue lighter. Um, with a long stem. A standing pilot, yes, yeah. but not, a, not, a, not, not an electronic, electronic ignition. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. you have to have it either plugged in or you have to have the batteries. And a lot of... There's, there's some manufacturers out there that just, they don't even have the batteries in there. So you've got to make sure that that installer right, that or that person is going to make sure that they're in there. Right, yeah. right. Well, mean, yeah. one of the things that we're trying uh, really uh, is to get uh, the homeowner to realize that it's very important to make sure that if you do have a gas-fired insert, no matter the age, for goodness sakes, maintain it, have it serviced. Absolutely. The same time as you service your furnace, and that should be yearly. It should be. Uh, it, it's. It's. You don't want any carbon dioxide coming in your house. That's just one of the most dangerous things. And I've seen so much of it because yeah. the fireplace is so old; it's never been serviced. You can't even see the flame in it. So yeah. why? Why would you leave it like that? Right. I mean, you, you should really. Yeah, you should have it serviced every year. So sure. there you have it from our pro folks. Sean is giving it to you from Baker View, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, filters as well because we've already explained the importance of servicing, but what about filtration, cleaning the air? Well, cleaning the air is a good thing. Most of the time people will have their fans running um, in the summer and the spring. Um, because it is humid out, you want to have a little bit of um, uh, you know, uh, air, air movement in your house, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if your windows are fogging up. But to clean the air, if you have a good filter, and it has to have a MERV rating on it, if it doesn't, just don't buy it. Incidentally, folks, Merv, M-E-R-V, for Victor, Merv. The higher the Merv number, the better the, the filtration. Better the efficiency. Correct. So when you're buying your filter, furnace filters, for goodness sakes, look on it and say, hmm, look for at least with average today would be what, 15? Uh, actually, no. Uh, Mervs right now, you, you can get the eights and the elevens are good. I mean, I would obviously get an eleven because that's pretty much the maximum you can go on a on a on a media filter. On a one inch um, media filter. No, actually, I'd be more of a thicker one. It's mm -hmm. actually they're a lot much thicker. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, two to four inch. Or so therefore, inch. the homeowner though, and we want to make it very clear right. that they're not going to be able to just go out and buy a four 
uh, inch unit and put it in where they right. pulled out their one inch because That's you're right. going to need some me mechanical tin work done yeah. uh, in order to uh, allow a sleeve uh, width of a filter being three or four inches to go in there. Correct. Whereas a one inch uh, pleated filter, what would be well, the... Well, a, three, a 3M is good. A 3M makes a great filter. Um, you know, you may pay anywhere from 15 up to $30 per filter. And BC filter, in fact, BC filter, I've had them on my TV show. Yeah. And uh, they make their filters only available through you people. They don't make them available through retail stores. Oh, okay. So therefore, yeah, yeah. the contractor yes. that's buying and using yeah. are able to buy the higher MERV even on a one inch unit. That's right. Yeah. So you can. it's yeah. it's very good. That yeah, way. but you should definitely look at you always look at the MERV rating. Um, you know, if you don't have allergies or, or whatnot, then then fine. I mean, that's that's right. okay too. But the yeah. one the one but I you like, want to clean your air for the sure. The one I like is the homeowner phone and say, um, Shell, I've got a real problem. I've got dust all over the house and I can't figure out where the dust is coming from. It's a white fine dust and I said, oh, what part of the prairies are you calling from or what part of the interior <laughs> of BC are you calling right. from? And they'll say, why? And I said, well, you've got mineral in your water and the mineral in your water along with your humidifier, yes, I have a humidifier. How'd you know that? Because that's where the mineral goes through and that mineral buildup now is presented into the duct system of your furnace That's right. and it's not being filtered back. It's going right on through the filter and right back up into your house. So MERV is very important and knowing the type of water and the quality of water and uh, humidifiers are another story altogether. Yeah. But humidifiers today again are hooked up to cold water systems more often than they are hot water systems and hot water systems because most people who have got mineral, uh, major mineral concerns, calcium in their water, yes. are going to have a, uh, a water softener. Yes. And that water softener is what's going to send the water to the hot water tank, to the humidifier. humidifier so therefore you get rid of the dust. So yeah. it's one of those things that uh, a lot of people just don't, they're not aware, but you can go over that with them. Yeah, and, and, and you also, you, you, if you can, have some sort of a summer fan on, like a summer switch or something to keep your fan running all the time. Can you add that? Yeah, we can add them. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah, because you know, if you have a good filter, use it. That's right. Run that fan and just let it and let it catch that dust. And let that um, uh, ambient temperature be uh, spread around the home. Yeah, because that's another question I get thrown at me so often, uh, and, and, and Sean, that uh, they'll uh, phone up and they'll say they got the uh, um, a, a good. Uh, um, humidifier. They've got a great uh, filter system, but the air doesn't seem clean. I said, "Oh, uh, is your furnace operating 24/7? Is it circulating air?" No. And I said, "Well, that's where your filter is. Turn it on. Turn yeah. it on." Yeah. So, but you got to be careful with that as well. Around this time of the year, when it gets cold and dry, mm -hmm. you don't want your humidity to drop too much in your house because mm -hmm. a lot of my house dropped down to uh, it was like 35 percent, which was pretty low. And and when that happens, that's when you want to turn your fan or your furnace um, switch to just automatic. Mm -hmm. your, your fan switch just turn right. it to automatic and leave it alone. And then when that humidity comes back up again, turn it back on. And what about uh, moisture within your home? Relative humidity using a dehumidistat. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, you can turn your. You can. A lot of older houses they'll have uh, your dehumidifier that uh, your, it'll bring your fan on to to your bathroom and then it'll turn your fan on to your furnace and right. then it'll just circulate that air. Yeah. Uh, but again, just even even having your furnace on, just circulating air will actually get rid of the moisture off your windows. So you do give the educational component. Oh, absolutely. To your sales service call. Absolutely. Yeah. Folks, it's just that easy. When you're using our home service, it's very important to understand that the people that we clear to go out and do referral work for my brand, Shell Buzzy House Smart Home Services, they are created in such a way to bring the information and the education to you. That way you know as much as anyone could possibly know because they teach you how your system works. That's right. It's just that easy. So thanks for watching our coffee break and uh, please tell your friends because if you haven't had your friends make comment on the uh, coffee break then they may not be aware of the coffee break or the podcasting. So let them know 
AskShell.com and become a member. As you know, it's free. So it's just that easy. Sean, thanks very much. No problem, Sean. Give your boss over there another high sign saying, big review, you're the best. Absolutely. No problem. And we'll do the rest. All right. Thank you very much again, folks. Have a great day. And hey, have a good year. Bye-bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.